Hey, welcome back to Two Super Guys Trade Stocks. I'm Dylan. And I'm Vinny. And as those of you who are fans of this channel know, Dr. Michael Burry is kind of a patron saint around here a little bit. We're going to talk about some of his recent tweets, some you know inflammatory stuff. He also re kind of brought up some other things before because we've seen the silliness come back into the market. I want to give you a little summary of what's been going on. Also, blatantly attacked Elon. If you like this kind of entertaining stock market content, where two super guys try to figure everything out, give us a like and subscribe, and we'll get started. <laughs> Two stupid guys, three stocks. All right. Ready? Yeah. So, you know, he actually put this this, this tweet out, which was kind of cool and interesting, I think, in that he basically put out uh, all of his, like, tweets all into one, saying, like, by the way, I've been telling you guys this stuff. Don't forget it. Like, you know, it, it, it's because he has this habit of deleting stuff after he posts it. But it was it was interesting that he put out this like tweet that contained a bunch of his other prior ones. Just so like, you know, he had a little bit of fun to reference again. <laughs> yeah. A little, little uh, summation, if you will. Yeah. I mean, people have called him a perm bear, rightfully so. You know, broken clock can even be right twice a day. We have to wait and see if he's actually accurate this time. But, you know, he's given I, us a lot of warnings. And that's I hope sure. that and this, that's not accurate. See Dylan's short video. Yeah. All right. Betting on that heavily. Yeah, he is. Uh, the silliness is back. This was this was great. Where he was talking of you know, I, I I believe he's talking about the whole meme stock thing that's kind of reemerged here. Uh, this COVID COVID era uh, silliness is not dead yet. As we saw, you know, you have Bed Bath and Beyond going up sixty five percent in a week. Uh, was the last time you were in a Bed Bath and Beyond, Dylan? Okay. Uh, it's been a long time. It should be noted. People will try to compare GME to Bed Bath and Beyond. GME's short float was over a hundred, which it's very complicated how that actually happens. Um, no. After that without happened, it being fraud. huh? Without it being fraud, I guess. Yeah, without it being fraud. <laughs> um, I think Bed Bath and Beyond is like forty, and that data is twelve days old. Um, and presumably there would have been a lot of covering in the last week. So, you know, we'll see what it yeah. actually is. And, and they were not even the worst. The, I think the, the highlight one that really kind of took off, and it was funny, Wall Street Pets was definitely getting blamed for it, was this HKD, this this uh, recent IPO Chinese fintech company that uh, no one knew anything about that was just rocketing from $2 a share to like a peak of $2,500 a share, closed on Friday at seven fifty. <laughs> Did you follow that one at all? No, that's terrifying. Yeah. yeah. Allegedly, the, some of the shares that were being transacted were not even ones that were eligible for the public to own. So it, it sounds like a really messed up situation that they at one point peaked as, like I think, in the top 30 most valuable corporations in the, in the world. More I, than Coca-Cola or Bank of America. This is <laughs> – was this a Chinese company? Yeah, and it was a Chinese fintech company. That's all I really know about it. Um. Yeah, the the alarming thing is that the public wasn't allowed to. This is going to be an investigation. This is going to be a problem. Some people are going to lose be. a lot of money. Yeah, Jeez. agreed. And it should be that that I think even the Wall Street bets uh, posts I saw were more people just watching from the sideline, going like, "Why the hell are they blaming us? We don't know anything about this." Yeah, jeez. Um, he also tweeted this. This one's pretty interesting. Um, false advertising. How about beta testing with human lives? So. We're going to do a little bit of a backstory. I will say I do want a Tesla. I'm just not willing to spend that much money on a car, like, ever. Uh, so I guess I'll just never have one. Um, but this is, uh, this is pretty wild. So essentially, the California DMV has accused Tesla of falsely advertising its full self-driving autopilot features. Okay, so two separate complaints. Um, but the basis of the argument is that these features wrongly imply that the cars are equipped with tech that can operate autonomously when they actually can't. Okay? Yeah. So that's what's happening. Now, the big name here, NHTSA, yes. whatever, uh, released a report on total crashes involving um, ADS or Advanced Driver Assist and aut autonomous tech. In one year, a little less than one year, 273 of the 392 total crashes were Tesla. 
Okay, but we need to know the sample size because I'm sure Tesla True. represents an uh, unreasonable portion of vehicles that are equipped with this technology that's on the current roadways. Absolutely, that is important. That is very important. I don't think they represent seventy percent of the total electric vehicles, but nonetheless, this is a high number. But you are correct. To have a stat, you really have to have all variables known. Um, yeah. This part's rough. Tesla is under investigation of over a dozen crashes involving Tesla autopilot and parked emergency vehicles. Great. Yeah. And then, uh, let me shrink your face here. Uh, they're also okay. looking at a fatality involving Tesla on autopilot and an unfortunate motorcyclist. This is one of 20, actually, I think it's 39. 39 investigations. Wow. Okay. You, you know what's crazy, too? I, we, we talked about it in a separate video, but there was a great chart about um, average number of miles to like autopilot disengagement. And Tesla was actually one of like one of the worst in terms of their disengagement compared to other companies that are doing autonomous technology. Yeah, that was a good video. Um, I think Google was up there. Um, yeah, Waymo is like number two. Google's yeah. considerate. Waymo is pretty good. So here's where Burry's tweet comes into play. So... Tesla allows drivers to test unfinished um, driver assistant features on public roads through the uh, full self-driving beta program. You must have the premium system, which costs like 12K, and have a high driver safety score. So his tweet, you're beta testing with human lives, and there's over 100K drivers that are part of the program. Is it really 100K? Or is every single person who drives a vehicle on a roadway in the United States actually participating in this beta testing program? Because let's be honest, there those are, a lot of those crashes involve people that weren't driving Teslas at the time, those emergency vehicles or that motorcycle driver. So he's using yeah. all of us as guinea so pigs. So there's been a decent amount of fatalities. To your point, it's not just Tesla drivers that are in the program; it's whoever the Tesla drivers interact or hit. So exactly. I, this seems like kind of a big legality issue. I'm sure that if you join that beta program, you sign your life away, I would assume. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah, this isn't that cool. And I actually do like Elon. I would never buy the stock at this price. I'm going to say that again. Yeah. Multiple times. But I, I, I do enjoy products and space. So. <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't? The, yeah. There was another tweet that Barry put out actually about him talking about the, the share split. Uh, Tesla authorized a three-for-one share split. I think it was like this Thursday or Friday at the end one. of this week. It's pretty funny. Um, and he was like, yeah, he's like, perfect. He's like, you hit it just the right uh, ratio there so that you can end up with uh, Tesla as a $3 trillion company without anyone realizing it. <laughs> yeah. Essentially, he was, if you if you just do a three-to-one and you're at 900 and you go down to 300, it's just enough so that everyone investing think it's supposed to be 900, not 300. So you just keep yeah. going. Nice. for him. I guess I guess some people make a lot of money on it if it's if it, if it's correct, but we'll see. Really? Yeah, I, I'm I'm a little uh, perplexed about this whole full self driving beta thing. I hate to stand in the way of science and technology progressing, but it, I think it's one of those situations where there's um, a unrealized hidden cost, kind of like burning fossil fuels. We'll, we've certainly seen that there's effects that we all share, and it may not be reflected in the cost. Uh, you know, the upfront financial you know kind of metrics in terms of the cost wars. We're all paying a price for Elon to be able to develop this technology. Should we not all get Tesla shares as dividends? That would be interesting. I will say there there is another unfair thing that's happening. I'm trying not to go into too much detail, but where I live, there was a fatality of a um, autonomous driving. It was it wasn't Tesla. I think it was, it was developing with NVIDIA chips and someone else. I can't remember. It was, but It's Waymo, I believe, is the one you were talking about. Was it? Uh, this was before I, I, Waymo. This was like It was a years couple ago. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. It was a person who was illegally jaywalking, um, which was then <laughs> hit. But that entire program was, that individual arm of that program was shut down from one mistake. And yeah. you can argue that that mistake wasn't necessarily a mistake because there wasn't supposed to be a human there in the first place. And I believe there was a supervising driver in the driver's there, seat at that point yeah. in time, too. There was. Yeah. Yep. Well, we're all paying the price. Now we got to see if we get the product. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a good one. Catch the next one.